Good morning. Thank you for attending. Today I'm going to go over the multi-body dynamic analysis with flexible body integration. I will be using the new Adams uh, version 2012 and the new interface. Here's what we'll go through. Uh, Adams flexible body integration, a little bit of history, some case studies uh, focused on how flex bodies have helped uh, various manufacturers. Uh, the Adams Flex uh, in detail, we've got a, uh, a valve train demonstration where we'll import the MNF file. Uh, we will show you how to use Adams Uflex, the new interface that makes it easy for the Adams user to generate flex bodies and stay within the Adams interface. And then we'll show you how, how it works and then a small summary. So why do we want uh, flexible bodies and multi-body dynamic analysis. Well, we're going to get the dynamics of the individual part or parts in there. You can have multiple flexible bodies. You can take a look at the flexible deformations and the stresses of the part and in the simulation of your system. There's also response changes in the simulation due to the flexible parts that you would be interested in. You get an increased accuracy in load prediction if you're exporting loads to the uh, analyst in the finite element area. You can also take a look at the flexible modes that are in the multi-body dynamic analysis uh, individually. You also have control over modal participation and damping to transmit design information back to the design engineers. Some examples of flexible bodies. Elastokinematic analysis of suspensions or the lower control arm. What are the stresses due to turning, going over the road surface, hitting maybe potholes, obstacles in the road while the wheel is turning, as you can see. On the right, I'm sure at least one person out there has dropped some electronic device and uh, wondered, will it survive that drop and can you use it again? We can do that with the flexible bodies in a multi-body dynamic analysis with atoms. We can do other things like landing aircraft, uh, aircraft landing conditions coming down on the tarmac, uh, panel deployment, satellites, whatever you'd like. So the flexible body integration was introduced in the mid-90s into atoms. Uh, when that was introduced, it was an extensive manual effort by the multi-body dynamic engineer who was not familiar with the finite element interface. They also had to deal with uh, a thing called Nastran DMAP to get it out. Uh, it required Nastran license and extensive outside work of atoms. The uh, automation of this procedure started with version 2004 of Nastran where there was no more DMAP. It was much easier for the atoms user to set up a flexible body using a finite element mesh but there was still some editing on his end and had to get out of the interface. In MSC Adams 2012, the introduction of Uflex, where now you can stay within the Adams interface, generate your flexible bodies from geometry, you can still import and do everything else you did in the past. Let's take a look at some of the case studies using flex bodies. Here's a uh, packaging man uh, machinery manufacturer who wanted to speed up uh, the bottle boxing of the machine. And when you start to speed up, you increase the load frequency and you could incur damaging vibration due to the uh, modes of the machine. You don't know what those modes are until you bring in flexible bodies, which is what was done here. So we used atoms to bring that in, use the Nastran FEA to build the flexible bodies of these critical components. And the end result was a actually a mass reduction of the parts 20 to 30 percent range and still being able to increase the processing speed by 50 percent. Sewing machine, a much lighter, lighter weight uh, uh, mechanism here. However, it's the accuracy of the threads, the needles, and so on going through the machine. Here's an example where multiple flexible bodies were added one at a time, not only the sewing machine and the individual parts, but the base at which it was set on. 
So now we're able to lighten this up, improve the precision of the product as it sewed the, pro uh, the material together. <coughs> Arvin Meritor over the road truck, they supply the frame to this, uh, this vehicle. And the problem was that as going down the uh, test track, the prototype, there was a, oh, a, a shimmy, which is the steering wheel moving back and forth in your hands. <coughs> and the only way you can target this in an Adams thing is to bring in the flexible bodies, particularly in this case, it was going to be the frame they knew was causing the problem. Bring that in. Therefore, now you know what the modes are of the frame, well, how it's connected up to the shimmy. You can make uh, design changes in the prototype and eliminate that. So let's take a look at the uh, new Adams Flex or the new interface with the Adams Flex. We've got uh, a more modern look to the interface. You see the flexible body panel there. I brought it over to the right so you can see it a little bit larger. The six options that are available. So the first one is create a flexible body. It's the original menu that Adam's users are probably familiar with. We haven't gotten rid of gotten rid of those. Uh, number two, you can flex, uh, swap flexible bodies. That is, if you have uh, different design, different meshes out there, it's easy to swap these back and forth. You can also do an internal flexible link. If you don't have any geometry, you are limited to a strict cross section as is extruded along, but you can build it that way. Uh, you can make a part flexible by importing an existing MNF that's already out there. Also, within the uh, Nastran uh, option of generating MNF, multiple versions can be stored on the uh, Nastran database. So number five lets you reach into the Nastran D-Ball Master and pull out the one that you would like instead of uh, the MNF file. And the last one, number six, is our new ViewFlex where you stay completely within the Adams interface and generate your flexible body. So let's start out with this valve train and import an existing m &F. So everything's a rigid body. The valve, the blue part, is going to be what we're going to change out. We'll simulate this first to give uh, ourselves some results of just pure rigid body. Run it for 250 time steps. That's usually about one and a half revolutions here. The two things we're interested in is the valve moving up and down and the seat and the cam action. So what we'll do is we'll rerun this and We'll run it for 10 times so we can get a good look at everything. So here we see the valve up and down, hitting the seat, which we expect. Over on the left, you see the force uh, vectors as the cam goes around. Now what we're going to do is we're going to swap out an MNF file. We've got one already sitting out there ready to go. Let's zero in on the valve. We'll go over to our flexible body selection. We'll select Adams Flex, import an MNF, standard menu you've seen before. We'll pick the part. We know what it is. We don't have to guess. It's going to be the valve. Select the MNF file out on the database. Check the connections, and as we'll move them if need be, so everything matches up one to one. We'll say okay. And we've got it inside there. So it shows up, you see on the tree on the left, under valve underscore flex, so you know it's a flexible body. And we now have that flexible. So now we will run this. So now we get the flex body in. Let's 
animate this. Let's just run the loads once again. Run it for the same time period, the same number of steps. We see a little bit of a change here. If you look over on the left, the follower is now lifting off the cam. We're getting some bounce back. This is due to the flexibility of the valve that we've incorporated. So let's run this for 10 cycles so we can take a look at it a little bit longer. You see as we go around, it jumps off. You see the bouncing over on the, of the valve on the right side. It comes off the seat. Okay. So we'll stop there. Take a look at the results of this. We'll go to the post processor. We've saved both uh, both of the results as rigid and flexible. Take a look at valve displacement. Clearly, we see there's a difference there. The blue dotted line is where we have the flexible valve in there. You can see the bounce off as it hits the valve seat, whereas the red line, which is our rigid, we have no bounce off. So there is some dynamics here we need that needs to be addressed in this valve train, just making the valve itself flexible. If we look at contact forces, much higher than the rigid. Again, this could be this is going to be something to be investigated. It could be damage to the valve seat itself. We may have changed the spring in the valve or some other part of this valve train to get it to work correctly and get rid of the bounce off. Okay, so now the new ViewFlex, just another icon up there in that menu, but now we stay within Adam's U or Adam's car. There is no finite element code that you need to load or have access to. It's actually within the Adam's installation. It's MSC NASTRAN. You don't need any FEA software. It's already taken care of. Uh, we can generate, again, the flexible body from existing solid geometry that's either been brought in we can import mesh meshes with this, or if there's newly created extrusion, it will work with that. You have control over the mesh, uh, the modal analysis, how many modes you want to extract, the attachment settings for connection back to the MBD analysis. So let's show. We're going to show you how that works. Again, we'll do this for the valve. Go up and click our ViewFlex icon. We already know because we clicked the valve, that's the one we want to make flexible. We don't have to guess. We just use the default and say OK. It's all done in the background. We close this information window take a look at our connections. The flexible valve is already there and you see up on top we've swapped it out automatically. And you have all the things you can do flex uh, if you want to make it visible, invisible. So we can also take a look at modes here. Those of you familiar with the MNF, you notice that the rigid modes are already, already excluded automatically with the view flex. So what we've gone over is the flexible body integration. We've shown you some case studies on the value of using flex bodies. Going over the general Adams flex. We still have the same interface available that uh, users are, are, are familiar with, the menus haven't gotten, been gotten rid of. Uh, we've grouped everything, though, into icons with the new refresh of the interface. Uh, the valve demo, which I think this is available for use by the users, shows you how we import an MNF using the new interface. We've gone through the ViewFlex, which is fairly straightforward and very automated. 
Uh, and then, again, show you how it works, things that you can do with it. Again, you can use this for every single part, individual part there, and just cascade through and, and as you go through, make every part flexible if you want to.